We've seen it now in Brazil. They banned Twitter. What is happening? After BTC Prague, literally five days later, I quit my fiat job. All my savings, I put them all like long-term investment into Bitcoin. Astro could now be what Bitcoin was in 2011. You can choose your own algorithm on Nostra. That is impossible on X or Instagram. One of my friends in Brazil, last week, they just randomly closed her bank account with no reason. I'm on Primal and then I was putting in my private key on highlighter and then everything was there what i do not have to set up a new profile a new picture i heard you ta uh, worked in real estate before like is that right yeah like back in um 2015 i moved to london after university and then i worked um in london until 2019 2020 just before the pandemic happens um yeah started there like very basic uh as a kitchen porter because i needed money quickly like when i came there i just had a one-way ticket with 500 euros and i needed money so and my english was so bad that time and then i um yeah moved to a, a hostel as a as a receptionist and then i was like okay, you know what, where can I, where can I find a decent job? Where, where can I earn money? Where can I uh, make a career? Um, and then I applied for the biggest uh, real estate company in London and they offered me a trainee position. And then, yeah, things got wild. But did you do that? I'm just fascinated by it because I know so many Bitcoiners that have some background in real estate. It's, it's really? a fascinating connection for me. Yeah. Um, so I like normally you start as a trainee, then become a consultant. Um, but I was uh, I'm German and I'm a woman, so I was very ambitious. So they like that. So apparently German people can work hard. I don't know uh, on time, like these basic kind of things. So, and I became manager actually. So after one and a half years, um, and, um, yeah, so I had my um, own office and then you just like sell houses, you, uh, buy houses, you have your trainees, you have your team. Um, and that's, yeah, was a very crazy market. Um, that was quite, um, difficult like these, uh, these times and days, But like the real estate industry is like a crazy job. I mean, you work like 80 hours a week, like Monday to Saturday is super competitive and very intense. Um, yeah, that's what I did. Really interesting. Because of you, you said that on time, uh, I have some podcasts with like Swiss and German people also and with podcasts all around the world. And it's a weird thing that happens everyone in the world is like like one minute early there maybe five minutes late there and the german people are the only people that are sometimes uh, in the in the chat already like five minutes early or 10 minutes early when i'm going in there like oh <laughs> already here so it's, it's it's interesting to see the the, the concept that actually german people uh, and swiss people are like way earlier there it's in, it just uh, i just wanted to, to point that out it's, it's an interesting uh, story yeah. really cool that you come from real estate but you never invested in real estate yeah? you just like worked in real estate Yeah, I worked in real estate. Um, I mean, I did earn a lot of money there, but I spent everything because nobody told me about money. So I was like, I mean, I was like mid end twenties. I was like, oh my God, like, you know, there's money. There's always money. So just spend it. Like, you just, just buy everything. And um, yeah, I wish back then anyone had told me about money, explained me the money. And I was just like, oh, it's a, it's a never ending story because, you know, you just work and you get the money. And, um, but obviously that was not the case. <laughs> and, and then you hope for retirement at, at some point and hopefully exactly. there's enough. Yeah, that's a, that exactly. Um, but I mean, house prices in England were like, are still crazy, but like when I came to London and saw like that a basic studio is like half a million i was like holy shit this is like this is so expensive but a lot of people can afford it um that's 
very um crazy but yeah i i never thought about like investing back then like i don't i don't know why <laughs> So, yeah, like uh, it, it comes later in in life. I, I see it with a lot of guests. Um, with your insights from real estate, even though you did not invest in there, but as as the real estate market, I think is uh, completely overpriced, and a lot of people misuse real estate and houses as their personal savings account for some reason. Um, why should someone like get into Bitcoin, buy Bitcoin, and not real estate? Uh, do you have some insights from real estate, and now also with with Bitcoin? That's I mean that's a very interesting and difficult question to uh, to answer um right now all my savings i have if i have them i put them all like long-term investment into bitcoin um i will not um trust uh the real estate industry especially also i'm in berlin absolutely i mean i I can't afford something to buy here you need a huge deposit and with bitcoin for me is 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 easy it's for me a long-term investment and you just can put something aside doesn't matter like how much you you're like um saving and for me um the awakening point from bitcoin was i mean i started quite recently actually like investing in bitcoin there was a year ago somebody like helped me in setting up all these kind of uh, things because I had no idea where even to start. And then I was like, okay, let's have this app. Like it was a, a relay app. So, and then I was doing just an outer investment every week. And then it, I remember when it was the beginning of this year, I opened my wallet and I was like, that doubled. Like literally that doubled. And I was like, I, I, I took a screenshot and sent it to my friends like, what? what is happening here? And he said, welcome, welcome. This is what's happening here. So, and that was a point was like, oh my God, this has a lot of potential. This really has a lot of potential. And I was like, wow, maybe um, that's a solution for the future. So that was very um, awakening for me. Yeah, I feel like the the number go up technology is the best marketing tool for Bitcoin. It, it's like it, it's the one thing that you just like cannot argue with. It's like oh yeah, it's 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 like you you will get um you, you will be protected against that inflation against all all the things like that's the that's the best uh, marketing. Was there besides that uh, uh, something that that was like oh that's that's interesting or did all the other things came later for you? Like what, what do you, what do you mean? Can you just explain that further? Uh, yeah, uh, for me, it's like, there are a lot of reasons why to buy Bitcoin and some people actually are obsessed with the technology. Uh, I, especially young people that are in tech, they're like, oh, that's interesting. I want to uh, do a round with that. And then, and then they come into Bitcoin that are a smaller group of people. Uh, then there is a group of people that really are pissed off with, uh, transaction controls. For example, in, in, in Canada, I think Trudeau actually onboarded a lot of bit, uh, Bitcoiners with, with that. Uh, so like the freedom, uh, technology, that point of view. But I think most people, uh, come in because, oh, I can protect my wealth. Oh, number the the price goes up in that so i'm always wondering like was was the uh, number go up the price the the main thing and the other things the freedom go up technology and, and how uh, you can actually transact borderless <laughs> over uh, continents i for i think just like two weeks ago i took my my i think second or third payment uh, in bitcoin and it was the first time it really benefited uh, uh, the both parties because he was not in Europe, so uh, it's a it's a really struggle. And so he was in America, and we tried to kind of set it up with fear. And then we were like, "Hey, we both are Bitcoiner. Why are we not just doing it in Bitcoin?" And it was such an amazing experience. It was like Sunday afternoon, uh, and he was like, "Okay, send me the payment link." I sent him the payment link. He instantly did it after. Uh, I think like after one minute, I got the first confirmation. And then after like 10, 20 minutes, I, I got the payment already in my wallet. Uh, I had to do no exchanges, no fear, no bank things, no accounting on that. Like it's it's such an, a pleasure way. So I think uh, that the, the true beauty of Bitcoin is for me always like a little bit 
hidden behind the the price tag. Uh, so that, that's why I'm wondering, like, uh, how how you discovered it and and what made it so interesting for you in the beginning and what you learned then uh, through the years. Yeah, there's a combination of a few things. I mean, what you just mentioned, um, I like that's the transactions are so so easy and quick, like um due to all the brexit and all these kind of things like if i have someone like in the uk and i want to send them some money and we had that actually recently this is so so complicated try to do that with your bank account well good night the tra transactions fees are horrendous or you can have someone like like is it wise or transfer wise it still, it just takes long. You have to confirm that and that and put that in. And I was like, my gosh. So, but if you have Bitcoin, well, you just send them stuff. I was like, wow. And um, especially like, um, I'm a huge fan of like Primal, which has a built-in wallet. So, and that is just absolutely fantastic and amazing. And um, the other day, someone um, bought one of my books and I was like, oh, how can I pay you? I was like, oh, just send me some sats. I was like, that's so, it's like done, like literally in seconds. And I was like, wow. And imagine like doing a normal transaction, which is, yeah, just very complicated. And then, yeah, I don't have patience and time. So, and the other thing is also like my, like my savings will all be, will always be my savings like they will be there in bitcoin i don't know like i could save on my bank account but the money i don't know if the money is there you know you never know what's what's happening like with the banks and um we have seen that like in, in history where they close the bank accounts um like one of my like one of my friend in brazil uh, she just like, that was like last week, they just randomly closed her bank account with no reason, like just that all her money was there. I mean, she did have like a lot of savings in Bitcoin, but imagine that wouldn't be the case. And it was like, yeah, how can you pay your rent? How can you like, this is just very, yeah, horrible. It's interesting. I, a few days ago, I just uh, released a podcast with uh, Ariel from uh, Argentina, and he talked about how Argentina went through basically hyperinflation and even like the last few years, how the development was be uh, there. And he had an amazing example. He said like, in five years ago, the average salary uh, in Argentina was a thousand US dollar. And now the average salary is 300 US dollars. In the meantime, yeah. all the prices went up massively. And he made that gas example, paying for gas for a car. Uh, and within a year, the price uh, tripled from like $12 to like 36 around that time. So like he, he he's like, if you just measure everything in dollars, you notice how bad it actually is in Argentina. And then they use do they, they use mostly dollar of course then uh and pesos and then when you measure that uh, not in dollars but in bitcoin it gets even crazier than that so uh i think the 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 rationale of of the west of the eurozone and and and, and the us is like oh no that will not happen to us no, of course it will happen to us like the, it's just a, it's just a different stage we are in like it, yeah. it's just a matter of time uh that uh, that that comes uh, also to us like we're not we're not safe from that no and that's what i find very difficult like i'm very new into bitcoin and also noster and um there is there are people here in germany or berlin you can share or talk about but like my peer group like my friends if i tell them stuff about that or they are just laughing it's like ah yeah that's just gambling it's like okay <laughs> thank you for this conversation and i mean my problem is like i do not have enough and strong arguments yet because i'm so new into it um but i think i mean i have experienced uh the huge benefit already so that's like why i'm so fascinated about it why i'm so into it and it's not about like just um Bitcoin himself as like um, like a freedom of money is like the whole 
ecosystem, the whole philosophy behind it, the whole people behind it, which are so absolutely amazing and like working so hard on having a better future. So when I went to BTC Prague, which was my first Bitcoin um, conference ever this year, there were, that was like absolutely fascinating because there were just people who I was like, oh my God, they are so amazing. They are, they think like me. Um, I don't have to hide. I can talk to them. And that was just amazing. Uh, I love that a lot. And you also, uh, you work now uh, on Nostra, right? You quit your job. Uh, is it right? Yeah. So um, <laughs> that was actually quite funny. After BTC Prague, literally five days later, I quit my fiat job. I'm still in my full-time job because we are in Germany. You have a long time to like give notice, which is like three months. But um, yeah, I'm here the last couple of weeks. And I was, I mean, first I was like, oh my God, what can I bring to this community? Because I'm not a developer. I have no knowledge about Bitcoin or Nostra. But then I realized maybe people and the community need people like me who are good in something not so tech related. And I'm an event manager full time. I organize huge conferences, meetups, events like from 800 people to then thousand people it really depends on the client. And I think that is something I mean, I can give the community back as well. So and this is what I would like to do. Really cool. With, with, uh, with whom are you working uh, now? Well, I have, I mean, I'm not working directly with someone. I mean, I, I also like volunteer, like for Anya at Amsterdam Prague for the bit vocation. And then I would like to organize in South America Like I will go to three conferences there and like in Argentina at La Bitcoin, then Sao Paulo, Satscomp and adopting Bitcoin. And I would like to put on a Nostra booth um, with a community at each conference and to just like show the people um, that there, I mean, if you, you also need freedom of speech, right? So And this is what was fascinating me so about Nostra. So, and um, yeah, this is what I try to um, get organized and need, of course, the support from a lot of people. And I mean, I got inspired by um, the guys from Prague, like Derek was and the team there just did an excellent job. I mean, that is, that was really fantastic. And like setting up a booth like that, That's my day-to-day -day business. And if I can just bring my knowledge in order to um, yeah, give something back, that would be great. Hey, I love that a lot. Yeah. Uh, Prague was, was amazing. Um, I already have like, <laughs> I want to go to the next conference. The next one I will go to is, is Amsterdam. I don't know if you're also there. Uh, and then in November, I will probably be in adopting Bitcoin also. Like, those will be, those yeah, will be I my two. Amsterdam. Yeah, I will be in Amsterdam. Oh, amazing. Yeah, uh, yeah. Amsterdam will be really cool. Uh, and then, yeah, adopting Bitcoin in November as in El Salvador, first time ever in, in, in Bitcoin country. It will be really, really, really fun uh, to, to be there and, and fa uh, see finally um, the, all those Bitcoiners in real life, physically, actually, again. Uh, I love that always. Um, I'm trying now to get like every month at least to like a local meetup or to some conference or to something where i meet some some local bitcoiners uh that's 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 an underrated thing to do in in bitcoin i feel like a lot of people like consume a lot of podcasts and learn a lot and do something but then they never really go out and and find someone like they, they only have this Uh, family and friends and they try to orange pill someone and that's really 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 helpful for bitcoin uh but they don't have real bitcoin of friends in, in real life so i think that's something underrated uh, and it's, it's really valuable to have bitcoin connections in in real life and have those connections uh actually in real life yeah that's yeah absolutely true because the most i learned about 
Bitcoin or like Noster was on a face-to-face -face conversation. I mean, I can listen to so many podcasts. I can read so many books, but my brain is just like overworked at one point. But like, I remember I was in Riga um, two weeks ago at Nostriga and we had a very nice uh, female evening dinner. And there was this amazing woman who explained me how money works. Like, she, and she did it in a way I, it was like, it was like just a journey about history. Like, and it was so like touching and it was so, so real that I actually got it, you know? So, and if you read in a book or listen, this is money, blah, blah, blah. I was like, wow. And I understood that. And this is why I think also like conferences are so, so important because You can physically show the people, this is how you do this. This is how you um, get onboarded or, or something like that. Amazing. Really cool. By the way, how has your um, <laughs> family and friends circle reacted to uh, leaving your job and, and going into Nostra? And what, how, what, how did you explain Nostra to them? <laughs> uh, well, I it's still tricky to like <laughs> explain Nostra to myself. <laughs> I just find it so fascinating. Um, well, my parents actually surprised me in Prague as well um, at the conference because it was my birthday and they showed up and my parents are, they just different. <laughs> I don't know. They are so open to everything and they said, do it, do it. Um, Go for it, uh, look after yourself um, and just do what makes you happy. Uh, because, I mean, I I want to have children at one point in my life and I want to put them in a world where I see a future, you know. So, And this is why I believe in Bitcoin and also in Nostra to build something and find a solution. And they are my parents are super supportive. I mean, my friends, they are like, yeah, that's another crazy idea what I do or what I have. So, but they are in their normal day-to-day -day business and life and, but that's absolutely fine, you know? So what, what do you think, or why do you think most people have such hesitation to go into Bitcoin? They look at, as you said before, they look at that it's gambling. Oh, yeah, you can do, you can play with your, your Bitcoin. I think even Trump said that, uh, go play with your Bitcoin. Um, why do most people have like this, this hesitation against Bitcoin? They view it as gambling, they view it as something risky. And how can we maybe make it better so people can actually grasp Bitcoin faster? I believe that a lot of people People just don't know like my neighbor the other day she never heard of the word bitcoin and she's 35 years old like even What? she had <laughs> never heard of the word bitcoin and i was like okay i mean they are like and that was like very interesting for me and i mean i am in in bitcoin because people i trust orange pilled me Like literally people I really, really trust and know very well and for a long time. Um, but I think that's, that's the thing. Like you, you just need people around you, you who are explaining it to you and, and also like women. So like I'm a woman and I hesitate. Like when I was like going to, to Riga, I went there by myself and I was like, oof, this is this is very challenging. So, I mean, of course I know, I knew that a few people from Prague were there, but I've seen them just once, like once in my life. Um, but I came there and it was just so, so amazing because like you have these groups, you have these telegram groups and then you have, um, then you just like message each other. It's like, yeah, let's go for dinner. I was like, oh my God, I, this would never happen like in my normal life because, And everybody was like, why, why, why are you doing this? Like, can you trust these people? It's like, yeah, I can trust these people because the spirit is just different. I don't know if you, if you realize or that as well. So 
I, I love that a lot. I mean, um, in, in Braga, something really interesting happened because um, I have done a lot of podcasts before. So I met a lot of people that either watch and listen to the podcast or as our guests on the podcast for the first time ever in real life. So it was like, I met like old friends again. It, mm -hmm. it felt like that, even though I... Like I just knew them from uh, the internet and now like I get there and like all of a sudden are like 20 people there that I know uh, that I never met in, in, in person before. Like it was, it, it was an amazing feeling, uh, but that, that's, that's comes mostly from, from the podcast. So I, I I'm, I'm kind of biased and not coming from a normal person that doesn't know anyone because I knew a lot of people. So for me, it's a little bit harder, but one year before that, I was also in Prague. And there I had exact that feeling because nobody knew me. I had no podcast. I was not known at, at all. I had no social presence. Uh, so I was just going there and it was amazing. You you just make friends while I am. you go to a booth and then someone stands yeah. there and yeah, he thinks like you. Like he he has the same uh, belief set that, than you do to a certain extent. And you 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 it's really a community and, and really a, a, a nice uh, friendship that you that you can share uh, really quickly and the spirit is as you said, like, oh, yeah, let's, let's grab something uh, uh, for, for food. Let's do something for dinner. It's like, that's, that's such an uh, open and interesting um, and community. It's, it's, it's fascinating to see. I think a lot of that comes down because we're so early. I, I don't know if, if Bitcoin makes this with us, I probably if more like because we're in such an early group. Uh, or do you think that um, maybe even Bitcoin changes <laughs> us as human beings to a certain extent? Um, I, I think so. I think we are more open to, I mean, I can just, uh, tell from my side, I'm, I was always a very open person. Like, I mean, the pandemic, like, especially told me to do, to be, to do so. And I think you question like the system, a lot of things, what's happening in the world, how you can solve and find a solution for a few topics. And not just money related, like freedom of speech, um, the ecosystem. And this is what, yeah, is, is such a different world. Like after the week in Riga, I came back to Berlin. I was depressed. <laughs> it was really, really sad. It was really, really difficult. And now I'm so looking forward to go to Amsterdam and meet new people and go to South America and, yeah, that's just, yeah, that's really cool. Really cool. Uh, I love it a lot. Um, as you're also in, in Nostra, I'm really interested in Nostra as, as also a content creator. Um, do you think that Nostra could now be like what Bitcoin was in 2011? Because Nostra is so early and like the network effects are slow and then all the things that Bitcoin was in 2011. Do you see that that comparison? Yeah, absolutely. I spoke with a lot of people who've been like, building on Nostra like for two or three years um, ago. And I mean, what I love about Nostra, I mean, Nostriga, it was like a conference with 350 people. There was nothing, <laughs> um, but you actually meet the developer. So when there's not something working, like I was like um, writing something on highlighter, um, which, um, and I couldn't upload my post and something didn't work. And I was like, Hey, this doesn't work, and you go directly to the uh, to the developer and say, "Oh yeah, um, we're gonna we we're fixing it." So you can actually email the CEOs of all these um, companies and um, clients. This is just brilliant. This is so so cool, and um, you can also give them feedback, and they appreciate that. And I mean, try to go to Instagram and send them like a quick uh whatsapp it's not working <laughs> good luck with that <laughs> yeah it's it's uh, it's fascinating yeah i had i had i think a, f a few weeks ago a discussion with with youtube because they have a really weird bug but it's not a bug i found out it's like intentional uh when you pay for youtube premium you can play videos in the in the background but only for videos that are public and not for members only. So like, it's a, a small, weird thing, but I learned oh, wow. that like, it's, it's, it's hard to communicate with big companies, but yeah, if, if I mean, if Nostra is getting bigger, I guess this, this problem is also, uh, will, will come closer. Um, 
Why do you think Nostra is so important for us? Freedom of speech. I mean, I've seen it personally and during the pandemic, like my um, family, um, they are doctors. So, and of course, there was a time where we were questioning a few things and then you write stuff about that and um, some social media um, accounts or apps don't like that <laughs> and they delete your stuff. And I think that's quite brutal if a CEO of a company can just decide, okay, this post or tweak or whatever, we're gonna delete because it's uncomfortable for us. And with Nostra, that is not happening. And this is what I really, really find so fascinating. And if we would have had Nostra like back in the days, or if we like, wow. But I think there's a reason why uh, we didn't have that. And now we can just make it better. And um, it's very, it's a very powerful thing to do and to have. So, and yeah, so it, it's just affecting me personally. That's why I love it so much. I love that a lot. Uh, really, really cool. Is there, uh, as you were in Nostriga and in Bitcoin Prague, uh, besides the size, is there a difference between the, the Nostra and the Bitcoin community? Oh, good question. The thing is like, I personally didn't realize it that much because Nostriga was just before uh, Baltic Honey Badger. So a few people were just coming like before. But why, what I did realize that like a lot of Bitcoiners don't have Nostra, like maybe one or two percent, but vice versa, like most of the um People on Nostra, they do have Bitcoin. And I think that has to be changed. And I mean, we've seen it now in Brazil, like they banned Twitter, like what is happening? And um, so people just sharing their end pops and it's like, okay, there we have an alternative um, where we actually can speak, where we actually can build something on it. I think um, that's why it's so important um, to spread the world. If you watch or listen to my podcast on a regular basis, I guess you already bought some Bitcoin. And now the most important step is to keep the Bitcoin. Keep them secure in a hardware wallet. My personal recommendation for hardware wallet is the Bitbox. It's super secure. It's simple to set up. It's also a perfect gift for a friend who has still the Bitcoin on an exchange and you can get a 5% discount with the code Robin at the checkout. Visit bitbox.swiss slash Robin to get your Bitbox. And if you really want to bulletproof your self-custody setup, your security setup, and maybe even your citizenship set up you have to talk to the bitcoin way if you go to the bitcoinway.com slash partners slash robin you get a 30 minute free call where you can dive deep with them if your self-custody setup is secure if your citizenship is secure or maybe might be improvable or your digital footprint in general is secure. They are the experts in cybersecurity, in Bitcoin self-custody, and how to be a secure, sovereign individual in general. And last but not least, I have something completely new for you guys. I partnered up with Coin Vigilante. This is the most beautiful Bitcoin timepiece that I ever saw created by anyone. Look at that beauty. I love it so much. Coin Vigilante made a perfect Bitcoin watch. That's the perfect, subtle, elegant way to go out there and show that you are a Bitcoiner. And that watch brand is Bitcoin. 
Bitcoin only. Make sure to check out the link in the description for this amazing coin which learned the time pieces. Those watches are amazing. I love them so much. It was really hard for me to pick the one that I want to have because there are a lot of great options. I went with the new transparency edition. They are all limited. So grab yours. Those will not be available for a long time, but there will come new models and new amazing designs along the way. Yeah, this, this Twitter thing was interesting because um, when Elon Musk decided not to censor things from Americans, where a lot of mainstream media was like, oh, you have to censor this, this is hate speech and stuff like that. And, and Elon Musk got a lot of hate for not censoring uh, people. And then uh, this in Brazil happened and the mainstream media in America was all of a sudden on Elon Musk's side and saying like, oh, he's a freedom of speech fighter and it's, it's good that he stands up against that Brazilian judge. It's, it's, it's funny how, how people, like if, if freedom of speech is, your, is, is convenient for you, they are for freedom of speech, but if it's something that they don't like, it's not yeah. freedom of speech. Like that, that's not freedom of speech. Freedom no. of speech is like you, you can handle also the speech that you don't like. And yeah. that's why uh, it's, it's interesting. For me, it's also like even the, like even if Nostra, I think Nostra can be mainstream, but even if Nostra never gets to a mainstream point, it will um, benefit freedom of speech because I can guarantee you that, that Elon Musk and other social media managers are aware of Nostra. And they know if they ban too much, if they do, if they go too far with that uh, limiting of speech, people will leave. People have that bad experiences, not only those who are directly affected, but those also who are indirectly affected. If people have like a show that they watched on a daily basis and all of a sudden that show is not there anymore, they're like, hmm, where's the show gone? Yeah. Uh, and they're like, oh, they got banned. Oh, where where they are now? Oh, they are now in Rumble. Oh, they are now in Nostra. I will yeah. I will watch them there. So, yeah. I think just the possibility that we can exit the system makes the system better. So I think Nostra makes X and all the other social media um, things better. Uh, and it will be very interesting how the future of social media is, and hopefully maybe X and YouTube maybe integrate some point with with the Nostra protocol. Like that's possible. Uh, and uh, I, I'm, I'm very hopeful for freedom of speech, to be honest, uh, long term. Uh, and uh, because we, like right now we are in the, the first 10, 20 years where we have this social media weird thing uh, where everyone can say everything on online. And then now the traditional system is like, oh, that, that's that's dangerous. That's dangerous. But the, the more the time goes on, the, uh, uh, we will see like you cannot, you cannot, uh, do anything against it anyways even if you really even if you're someone like oh i hate free speech and i want to exactly control what, what speech is you cannot do that on the internet the internet is free yeah. people will develop things people will develop nostra uh, and if if uh, youtube bans too much they will all flee to to rumble they will all flee to, to nostra they will all flee to fountain uh, they will all flee to something else then uh, YouTube. So uh, that's that's a huge positive development. I just want, sorry for the rambling. I just wanted no, to throw that in. No, I like to like have the insights. It's like, it's so true. I mean, we all know social media is broken. I mean, there's a great documentary. I don't know if you know um, it from Max DeMarco. Um, he did that. He published that a year ago. And like social media is like addictive. Like I get depressions. Like like Instagram, you have always these scrolling and advertisement and here and there. It's like so, so much. I get anxiety from it. I get sick from it. And um, this is what I think, don't think like that they will integrate into Nostra because um, there is a CEO of Instagram and there's not a CEO of Nostra. There is just none. And um, Nostra is built to... I mean, you can choose your own algorithm algorithm on Nostra and um, that is impossible on X or, or Instagram. And I, I have to say, like, the last two weeks, something really, really changed for me as well. So, like, I am less active on Instagram. I don't post any every day, like, a story. And people reaching out privately and was like, are you okay? I was like, yeah, I'm absolutely fine. Why? 
yeah, you're not like posting so much stuff. I just want to see if you're okay and you don't like my stuff anymore. It's like, I was like, you know what? I'm so okay. You can find me now on Nosta. This is how okay I am. And they was like, Nosta, what? <laughs> and I just, yeah, I have no intention to just, I mean, get on my phone in the morning and open Instagram anymore. I mean, who would do that anyway? Like imagine that's like letting hundred people in your bedroom as, as Jay Shetty is saying, like who, who would do that? I love that. I saw that clip also from Jay Shetty. Like if you're open uh, social media in the morning, it's like letting hundred people in your bedroom. I love that a lot. <laughs> uh, does some of your friends maybe think that you joined a cult? <laughs> Yeah, sure. It, it, it's it's fascinating. It's, it's like from the outside, it could actually look like like you are socially um, like you're thinking different. You're asking questions you didn't ask before. You're changing some of your behavior. Uh, you even uh, out of that, you maybe even uh, uh, start having new friends. Uh, you are socially somewhere else and distancing distancing maybe. So like <laughs> I, I get that why people maybe think that Bitcoin is a cult because from from the all the um, properties and all the um, if you just look from an objective standpoint and the person how it does um, it it's either he po positively changes something or he joined a cult and people tend towards hey he joined a cult right? <laughs> I mean yeah. In, in in Germany, you call them different thinkers. I don't know, like, you know, and that I always question the system since the pandemic. I always were asking why and people and my friend know that from me. And I was like, like all the vaccination rules you had here in Germany. I was like, nope. <laughs> not doing it. <laughs> and you get a lot of hate for that. You get a lot of hate. You get in so much trouble. I mean, on a German podcast, I would never like talk about these kind of things <laughs> because they probably will knock at my door at one point. I was like, who is this woman? <laughs> and who are you? And yeah, I got in a lot of trouble for like not uh, supporting the overall opinion <laughs> yeah it's interesting i think uh you're talking about querdenker and it's uh, yeah, i think yeah. directly translated as lateral thinkers but i think uh most um the best uh translation is probably out of the box thinking uh i think that's the best uh, I, at least uh, that uh, I could f think of uh, of a translation. And I think that's something really interesting that that word has a negative uh, connotation to it in the German area. Where like out of the box thinking is the best thinking there is because yeah. everything else can be done with AI and machine learning. <laughs> exactly. No, I totally agree. And this is what I try to... Um, yeah, out of the box. That's why I was looking for a different word because for me, out of the box is something super positive. And this is all what we want, getting out of your comfort zone, like, or at the edge, like, you know, thinking out of um, the box. But here is like, no, don't, <laughs> just don't. The, the German thinking is stay in the line. Stay it in has the a good, line. perfect line. Exactly. <laughs> I can say that because I'm German. <laughs> like, this is okay. <laughs> no, but it's, um, yeah. And so is my whole family. But yeah, of course, not, especially my, we are, we are still young and um, people in my age, of course, they do think out of the box, but they don't act like that, you know? So they think, oh yeah, this shouldn't be the case. This is not good. But I do it anyway because like 90% from the people are always doing also doing this. And um, if I don't do this, uh, oh, yeah, then uh, I get in trouble. It's like, okay. How did Bitcoin already, as you have it only a, a sh short time, uh, how did Bitcoin already impact your personal freedom? Like it was 2020 when I first heard about Bitcoin friend of mine who actually then orange pilled me um 
spoke about it. I was like, what is that? And then he was like, also, like, it was during the pandemic. He was like, yeah, this is not good. Here, have the research. I was like, oh my God, this community, things like. So I connected Bitcoin with an out of the box thinker. So the whole community behind. And this is what gave me so much support and hope. So I. I joined this Telegram group back in the days and they were so like-minded people. And I showed it to my parents like, mom, dad, we are not alone here in Germany. There are also other people who think like us and who try to find a solution. And yeah, that is what just got me more into Bitcoin. And then I started, of course, reading about Bitcoin. But I was just like, nah, this is so early let's wait, let's wait. So it took me three more years until two. I was like, okay, you should do something now. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's three years seems a good time. I also uh, tr uh, needed three years. I, I needed from 2017 to 2020. I thought three years long that Bitcoin is a scam. I think it's just normal. Like you, you yeah. it's, it's too good to be t true in the beginning. Yeah. You're like, oh, that can't be. Like, that's not the case. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I mean it proved themselves, right? So I think everybody, a lot of people are also against it and say it's gambling because they're afraid of it, maybe. Absolutely, yeah. I have one more question about Nostra. Um, what hurdles do you think Nostra has to, to overcome to really onboard a, a lot of people and have those network effects that uh, the big social media uh, already have? Yeah, that's a good topic, actually. The onboarding process is is still tricky i'm not gonna gonna lie um i well somebody set it up for me at at the booth at btc prague so <laughs> downloaded the app connected my wallet and then you have your i mean it's quite easy you don't have your username you have your um public key and you ha don't have your password you have your um private key but save that private key somewhere because otherwise you cannot like, if this is gone, it's gone. So, and this is something like you need so many apps in order to actually use it. And if I wouldn't have had so many people who were so patient to me, explaining it, showing it, um, like if I, like, if I say to my mom, for example, yeah. Go, go to Nostra, set that up, download this app and then this and this and this. I lost her already. It's like, so that's why I think um, workshops would be amazing. I mean, they're amazing YouTube tutorials already. Like um, Derek Ross at Nostriga had a, an amazing speech, like uh, Nostra for beginners or so. Um, that was really not so tacky. It was like... But that's a problem with German people. I know that a lot of people, they do not speak German, uh, English that well. So we need German content at least here. And I think the same applies to like South America. I mean, when I was in Brazil back 2019, none of them spoke English. Like literally people at my age, they don't. But I mean, these days with AI <laughs> could be translated quite easily. Um but yeah, the onboarding is not so is not so easy. I have to say, the onboarding has to be extremely good. Like I think that that's a like the, a major bottleneck because I see it, uh, even onboarding uh, like your grandma to WhatsApp is a like oh I have what I have to download that app. Like even the downloading of the app is sometimes already too much. So like then with NPUBs and if, if you. If you use two words that they don't understand, they, they will not do it. The, the 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 friction is just too high, so it has to be really like you download the app, you have three clicks, and all of a sudden you can already post a note, you can already do something. So it has to be extremely good, and I'm I'm very positive that we will get to the point. I see that we are not there even close yet. Uh, like you have to really want a Nostra account, you really want to be on the platform. Um, and there, what reason is there to be on the platform? Yeah, freedom of speech. Most people uh, in social media 
don't care about that too much right now. Unfortunately, it's a small bubble that really is like, oh, freedom of speech. The most just scroll through their Instagram and TikToks and uh, YouTube shorts. They're like, ah, I see content. People don't uh, uh, ban anything. So either this gets really out of hand where a lot of people notice the, the freedom of speech aspect or it gets really good in onboarding people and then starts to like... We're, for, for Nostra to succeed, we, we still need a, a long way to go. But the same thing applied to Bitcoin in the early days, like the same, same, same things we, we said about Bitcoin uh, when we didn't have all those apps helping and exchanges helping. Um, interesting will be because with Bitcoin, there's a major financial incentive. Like you, you, if you adopt Bitcoin, you, in, you, you really incentivize financially. With Nostra, I don't see the financial incentive. I mean, of course, if you post there, you get saps and those saps are Bitcoin and then you, 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 your value is also like, there are, there are a lot of challenges that I still see, but I love the technology and I hope it is mainstream one day. Uh, and I'm trying my best to like bring the topic up in the podcast and, and talk about it uh, and use it also from time to time. But as a content creator, you cannot be on every platform. And right now, X and YouTube and a little bit Rumble is where the, the action is. And uh, the, it's, a, it's, an interesting, it's an interesting time where we are right now. It's like the, the first inning of, of Nostra. Yeah, it is very interesting. But like, I mean, what I realized is like you post... I was I was writing a post the other day and it was literally the moment I thought oh my god now it it clicked so like I'm on primal and then I was like putting in my private key on highlighter and then everything was there I was like what like I do not have to set up a new profile a new picture like this is not happening with LinkedIn or Instagram or Twitter. You have to like, oh my gosh. And I was like writing my inner experience and excitement just in a very a short post on um, on Primal. And the people were like z sending me sets. And it's like even Jack Dorsey like sent me 5,000 sets. It's like, okay, I wrote something and I <laughs> earned something. And uh, do that on Instagram. Good luck. Like, you know, it's like same with podcasts on Fountain. Like, um, if I like your, like your episode, I send you some, I, I zap you. Right. So, and this is just absolutely amazing. And people are also like super, super friendly. Like I, like, I wish them a good morning. Like do that on Instagram and say, good morning. People's like, what is this woman talking? Like, nobody's replying and and yeah that's a spirit and that's what i just love is there another place there where i should be i mean i'm on fountain i get saps there is there another thing where i should upload even maybe my video uh on nostra i, I heard yeah. one one guy said to me i should upload the link of youtube but i'm like yeah that that's not that doesn't, doesn't do it is, is there something where i can natively upload the video and it's like a similar platform than than um uh than youtube or rumble i mean i'm a huge fan of like primal even you cannot like upload the well you can that's what what i yeah i did that like a week ago i mean probably you download your video and have a short like like clip or so and then you can directly upload it on primal as well and say this was the interview you have the clip and then you send the link and it's like now available on fountain to to listen to um absolutely primal is more like it from the ui it feels more like twitter right in p I use it as well to post their like pictures or videos and so does others. So it's what, that's the beauty of it. You just do whatever feels right for you. And if you would like to send a short, like upload a short video um, to tease your um, podcast, why not? Then people click on it. Oh yeah. Short videos. Yeah. Like that, Short, like, that, good like, 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 like 30 seconds, like, oh my God, this is cool. So this is how we, 
how I did it with Philip like a week ago from Bitcoin Insights. He just, um, yeah, uploaded it, and that was that was quite fun. Really cool. Yeah, thank you so much. I probably I will I will start doing that uh, because I thought about how I can get on Nostra. I mean, of the fountain, I'm already kind yeah. of a Nostra thing. They have yeah. a Nostra integration and stuff like that. Um, but the platforms feel more than feels more like Twitter and less than YouTube or Rumble from like the, just from overview, uh, like YouTube is like, oh, you have a desktop app also and you see all these things. It's a little bit of different UI just, but, uh, for example, I also upload my full video on Twitter, but I know from the statistics, people don't watch it. <laughs> people no, see the video and then go to like, YouTube. Yeah. 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 Short clips and tease it and, um, ask for feedback. They are honest. They're like. That's what I would suggest. Ah, really cool. Thank you so much. Uh, nope. Perfect. Then uh, we have a lot of <laughs> topics left, but already on, on one hour. Um, maybe what we could go into, um, one thing that I really want to get into, maybe a second thing if we have time, what would the world look like if Nostra and Bitcoin are successful? Whenever this is, maybe 2050, maybe uh, 2021. Uh, so like, what, what, what do you think? will will be different in the world if uh, we have everyone is exchanging money with bitcoin and everyone is uh, has their social connections on on nostra I, sorry to say that i don't think that's gonna happen ever <laughs> because there are always like some egos around who would like to be the ceo of these companies <laughs> Like, you know, somebody would like to be the CEO of Bitcoin and Nostra, which is impossible because it's like decentralized and uh, not going to happen. Um, but like for me is I, I do care about the current system, but I cannot fight against it. It's absolutely pointless. So um, I, we just build our own system. And once that like falls apart we have our other community our support to have a like um way to live in hopefully more freedom and more peace i mean we will not change the world but i think if we can just like take the people we care about and um build something for our children in the future to have a better place to live that would be fantastic. Be cool. I think I think that could be a, a really cool world if if we get there. But yeah, I, I agree with you. It's I mean, it's it's, yeah. it's hard. It's, it's, like, it's... Especially in two thousand fifty, right? So it's like, yeah, sure, that's tomorrow. <laughs> I mean, the the one thing that makes me more optimistic is when I see past technology advancements. Like when you look back at, for example, when in, in, in 2020, what, what was the internet looking like and how many people actually used the internet on a daily basis and how many do it now. So we, we could go through uh, a, a quick adoption and there, there's then this topic of like, oh, but now we have feared and we have a big system that fights against that. But there was always like a big system that fought against a new one. Like, but probably fear is way way stronger than that. It's interesting. Um, I, I, I currently I'm writing uh, on on a book and I'm writing on articles on how this transition goes and and if we ever get there. Uh, so I'm I'm not 100 percent at the at my answer yet. But I see a lot of positive and a lot of negative things uh, going in this transitioning time. And I, I choose to be very hopeful that we can live one day in a Bitcoin world. Um, with Nostra, I'm just not deep enough uh, to, to, to think about that. Uh, but if, if open protocols are long-term better than closed ones, then Bitcoin and Nostra hopefully win long-term. Uh, it will be interesting to see because, yeah, if, if, uh, with, with social media, there's then a whole other um uh, challenges also that that bitcoin has so will will be very interesting so i was just curious what what you think about that um uh, yeah it's it's interesting it's, it's a lot of interesting uh thoughts i mean yeah it's like for me is it's just hope like you know this is why I'm so excited about it this is why I try to do something for the community and it's like when you're new into something it's like 
that's for me the biggest challenge right now, proof of work, because I'm new here and I'm, who am I to say something, right? So um, that's why I will like, no, I do not have um, one uh, proper person I work for. I volunteer. I like spend like, like I'm happy to just like buy my tickets to these kind of things because um, you give, you get so much back from that. It's, this is just amazing. I mean, the amount of money we spend on our daily basis, like going to a party or in a club is like, yeah, that's a ticket for me to Amsterdam kind of, you know, so. Uh, very, very true. Last topic that uh, we discussed before that we, we want to get in the podcast is women and Bitcoin. And it's interesting for me because I see all the statistics, how many females versus males uh, audience I have. And it's, it's, it is somewhere between five and 10%, sometimes closer to 9%, sometimes closer to 5%. It's, it's not a trend. It's like up and down for me. And I also mentioned that I think with, with Anya's um, uh, podcast, that the biggest um, female podcast is Natalie Brunel. She has around 20% of, of female audience. Uh, which is like, okay, if, if a female uh, podcast host and she's the biggest one, that's probably like right now the current uh, maximum I could reach the 20%. <laughs> so I'm around like halfway there. Um, how do you see that? Like, do, do you think it's 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 harder to do orange peel uh, woman or is it just different or do we don't have enough uh, women role models in, in, in the Bitcoin speaker world? Just can like tell from my experience if like for example Anya wouldn't like have told me like yeah speak speak to Robin go on that podcast I was like why would I do that and she was like Tanya you have an amazing story to tell um I was like and I was like I'm not a developer I'm new to this I have no idea I mean I have no clue what I'm talking about and she said well yes you do and you can give so much back and inspire maybe other like women or other people to to just like yeah get on board it as well even if you do not have a tech related background and this is what I try to explain all my um, female friends like don't be afraid and if you have questions they're amazing people you can ask so and this is what I'm doing it's like I don't have the knowledge so i just asked it's like okay what can we do and but you have to be a very open person in order to do so because yes there are a lot of males and of course um at these conferences that can be sometimes quite intimidating but these kind of men they're super nice they're literally very very nice and helpful and I mean, I work in events for a few years now, never seen that in any industry that there was such a openness and understanding um, thing. So, yeah. I would love to see that. Like, it's uh, it's interesting to, 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 to speak about that. Uh, and yeah, it's, it's interesting uh, uh, because I... For me, it's like how, how different are, are the people in Bitcoin versus somewhere else. I have a little bit of experience in IT security, and I can definitely say there's a big difference between IT security and Bitcoin. But it's it's like it's just two different. Like I cannot really say something about that. Really cool. Thank you so much for sharing this with us. Um, before we get to to the end routine, uh, what can we learn from you besides all the things that we already uh, talked about? I think what I actually realized sometimes these like the. The Bitcoin community and also the Nostra community is very unique. You have to be very sensible what you do, what you say, but they're super, super nice and friendly. But um, I just, yeah, like have to actually do the work rather than just like stop talking and just like do something, you know, and a proof of work um, is very important uh, for the community. And this is the big learnings I had from the last couple of weeks, actually, you can be excited and passionate about something and talk about like, oh, how excited and passionate you about about it, but just like um, go out there, change something and do something. I love it. Really cool. Now let's come to the end routine where our previous guest asked a question for our next guest. So the question for you is, 
If you can change one thing about Bitcoin, what would it be? I don't like orange. <laughs> I love that answer. <laughs> yeah, orange. Uh, what, 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 what color would you prefer? Like what, what's, what, what should be the, the color of, of Bitcoin? Um, purple? <laughs> no, yeah, that's what I wanted to say. Purple, but that's like, that's Nostra. So, but you can't change anything about Bitcoin because like, that's how it is. So. I mean, you can just like, there's no central authority on color and no. maybe you can just, you, you can just use another color for Bitcoin. No. And if you use it good enough and people really like that color on Bitcoin, maybe it gets adopted and maybe you are the person that changes the color of Bitcoin from like gold to uh, orange to now, I don't know, green. <laughs> no, green is not good. Green is not good. Bitcoin cash is green. Sorry. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. And uh, thank you so much, uh, Tanya, for, for being on my show today. Before I let you go, where can people find you and ask you questions? Well, on Nostra, my end pub. Re read it out loud. <laughs> Now I will, I will put it in the <laughs> show description. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, yeah, please. I sent you my end pub. <laughs> Perfect. And thank you so much, Tanya, for being on. Also, thank you so much for everyone that's watching and listening for joining us today. As always, I'll be back tomorrow with another episode. Bye-bye. <laughs>